Welcome back from an ad break. So now let's just jump right in. We are going to start with the general uh, chemical reactions. At with, and within that, we're going to be looking at what is entailed in a chemical reaction. So firstly, a chemical reaction consists of the following things. Number one, reactants. Reactants are substances that participate in a chemical reaction. So they participate in a chemical reaction and their chemical formulas are written on the left-hand side. Important, written on the left-hand side of an equation. Then we also have our second item, which is the products. What are products? So now those are substances that are formed in a chemical reaction. And their chemical formulae are written on the right-hand side of the, of the equation. So the left-hand side, that we have the reactants. Then on the right-hand side, right-hand side, we have the products. Then also within a chemical reaction, we have an arrow. Now this arrow denotes that it's a react to form sign. It's a react to form sign, which points from the reactants to the products. So it tells you that these have undergone a chemical reaction to form something else. Now we also have a plus sign that is going to separate the chemical formula of the, of the reactants because you find that in certain reactions, we have two or more reactants or two or more products. So to separate those reactants, we're going to use a plus sign to say that if this particular a, a compound or this particular element has reacted with this particular element and also reacted with this particular element to form something else. Now that something else is the product. So as we have as our, as our example here, we have the two reactants A and B that are separated by this plus sign. And then these reactants, they are going to form something new. So this arrow shows that these two reactants are undergoing a chemical reaction to form C and D. And C and D, those are going to be our products. Furthermore, we also need to know that all chemical reactions can be broken into two parts, as we, as we have uh, seen that. The chemical reactions can be broken into two parts, whereby we have the reactants and also have the products. So what happens during a chemical reaction? Firstly, the existing bonds, because you find that you have a molecule of oxygen. So the existing bonds of the, of the molecules or of the reactants, they are going to break and new bonds are going to be formed. So, during a chemical reaction, the bonds that hold atoms together may be broken. And there's going to be new bonds that are going to be formed when a product is being created or when the product is being produced. So, existing bonds that are going to be broken and new bonds are going to be formed. And as we can see on this particular picture here, we have two reactants and then we find, we're seeing that the bonds of the existing molecule or the bond of the existing compound are breaking and new bonds are forming here. On this particular one here, we're seeing that we have one, molecule, one atom of carbon and one oxygen molecule. Then the bonds that are holding the two oxygen atoms together is going to break. And once that breaks, there's going to be a new bond which is going to form between the carbon and oxygen, also between this particular carbon and this oxygen. So what is important to remember is that in a chemical reaction, for it to take place, the existing bonds need to be broken and new bonds must form. Also, all the atoms that were present before, all the atoms that were present before or the beginning of the reaction. And we're saying that those atoms that, are, that were present at the beginning of the reaction, they are known as the reactants because they participate in a reaction. Now those reactants will still be there after the reaction has completed. Now they will no longer be there as their own reactants, but then they'll be there as in a compound. So something new will be formed there. Now, that, that's now, that, that now is telling us that the properties of the substances produced in a chemical reaction differs from the properties of the original substances. So we're going to start with our, uh, with our uh, metal here, sodium, that is going to react with chlorine. And then these two are going to undergo a chemical reaction to form something new, which is our table salt. 
So we can see that the properties of the elements before the reaction has taken place is different from the properties of the product that was formed after the reaction has taken place. So which supports our statement that the properties of the substances produced in a chemical reaction differs from the properties of the original substances. Furthermore, a chemical reaction, what is it? That is the process in which the atoms are rearranged. So basically what happens in a chemical reaction, we are breaking the existing bonds and then rearranging the atoms that were there at the beginning of the reaction. So that is the process in which atoms are rearranged to produce new substances. The chemical reaction rearranges the atoms of the reactants to create different substances, and those substances that are different, they are known as your, your products. We can take this as an example, that initially, before the reaction, we had one reactant and another one. Remember, they are separated by a plus sign. Now, these two, these two reactants, they are going to chemically bond together and form something that is totally new. Initially, we had one, one, so we had two reactants initially, but then as the product, they are chemically bonded together to form one substance. Now, the properties of this substance is going to be different from the properties of those individual substances. We can also look at this particular reaction here, whereby now a compound is going to break and form two new substances. So now, the bonds which we're holding this, this, this compound together is going to break, and then in this particular reaction, there are no new bonds being formed because we're just having two single uh, elements or two single substances that are being formed as our products. Then we can also continue and look at the other ones to say that we are starting with a certain amount of reactants. Now those reactants are going to break their existing bonds and then they're going to form new bonds. And once they form new bonds, those new bonds that are being formed are called the products, and those products are going to be different from the elements that made those products. So, in a chemical reaction, we can tell if it has taken place when one of this is happening. So we can tell that a chemical reaction has taken place if one of this has, uh, has happened, or you can see it. Number one, if you see that there has been a color change inside the, the reaction flask, so when you are mixing two substances or two or more substances together and you see a color change, then you should know that a chemical reaction has taken place. Number two, when you see that a gas has been formed, usually we know that, we know that a gas has been formed when we see bubbles. So when you are mixing substances together and you're seeing bubbles, so those bubbles are actually taking the gas out of the, of the reaction flask. Now, we should not now, we should also remember that we should not confuse this with boiling. Remember that boiling only happens when the liquid is heated. So when we heat a liquid, that's now we start by evaporation and then go to boiling if we further increase the temperature or the energy of the, of the liquid. Also, when a solid is being formed, so when a solid is being formed, when you're mixing two things and you're forming a solid, that solid is called a precipitate. So when a precipitate is being formed, we can say that the chemical reaction has taken place. And also lastly, when we see a sludgy or a cloudy deposit on the, on the reaction flask, we can then say that a chemical reaction has taken place. So for us to be able to tell if whether a chemical reaction has taken place, one of these four needs to happen. We need to be able to see it with our senses. Sometimes you can smell, which is not advisable. And then you also, sometimes you can see what is happening, seeing the, 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 the precipitate forming, seeing the gas bubbles that, that, are, that are being formed there, and also seeing the color change. Right. As we have said that our senses, they can help us in identifying a chemical reaction or in, in a saying for certain that a chemical reaction has taken place. Number one, we, we know that sometimes chemical changes can be smelled. So we can smell chemical reactions of which it is not advisable. And if you do, we waft. You don't just directly smell from, from, the, from the reaction flask. You waft the smell to, to, your, to, your, to, your, to your nose. For instance, when a new material that has a strong smell is formed, 
So when you are forming something that has a strong smell, you can smell from a distance that something is happening there. But it is not advisable that you go to that particular reaction and directly smell from the reaction flask. Number two, other chemical changes can be felt. So you can feel some other chemical changes. Uh, for an example, when a reaction produces heat, you know that sometimes when you're mixing two things, there can be heat being produced in that particular reaction flask. And also, you should not just go to that reaction flask and just touch it, right? And then the last one, some chemical changes can be heard. So sometimes you can hear from a distance that there's an explosion that, 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 that has happened or that has taken place. And then also an, an explosion is an example of a, of a chemical change. So sometimes we can smell, sometimes we can feel, we can also hear and even sometimes see the color changes we have seen that there is a color change in this particular reaction. And if, if one of those things has happened, then for certain we can say that a reaction has taken place. Right. Now, when, before we move on to our next concept, which is now the reactants and the products and what those things are actually in a chemical reaction, what do they do? We're just going to quickly take an ad break and I'll see you just after this. <laughs> 